Well, officials in Gaza say more than 5,500 children have now been killed since the 7th of October. That's around one every 12 minutes since this conflict began. Monday marks United Nations Children's Day, as Sarah was saying. Salim Oas is from UNICEF's Middle East and North Africa Regional Office. Um, welcome to the program. Uh, good to see you, Salim. Uh, what are you hearing from your teams on the ground? Yeah, thank you. Um, just to, to comment on the World Children's Day, unfortunately, we were supposed to celebrate, but I think uh, the situation in Gaza is just the opposite of what uh, uh, children's rights uh, uh, should be. Um, uh, our colleagues on the ground, they are facing the same difficulties as we see, and uh, many of them actually lost some of their own children, uh, which is a horrible, horrible reality now in almost every, every house in, uh, in Gaza. Um, as, is, as you mentioned, over 5,000 uh, children have been killed and over 9,000 have been uh, injured. Um, this, these numbers are just horrific, and these numbers are, should, should, be a, a, should stop us and think about what is, uh, what is happening there. Well, there are movement restrictions in Gaza. We know there are reporting restrictions, and of course there's inevitably an information war in addition to the military conflict. Can you give an accurate sense of how many children are being hit by this ongoing violence in Gaza? Unfortunately, as, as in all uh, uh, violence and con conflict contexts, it's really hard to give a real-time uh, number, uh, accurate number, at the moment, but we know that uh, the numbers that we are receiving uh, through reports uh, are uh, are there and like they're very very close to to reality, if if not more. Unfortunately, um, now the the situation. I think the question now is how many how many lives does it take to stop the violence? And I think that's where um, our calls for the international community and to the parties to the conflict to um, uh, stop for a moment and and consider. Uh, on this day, on the uh, World Children's Day, to consider their commitments uh, um, uh, to the children and their rights. And I think n we don't need to, to wait more uh, on, on, um, on children who are losing their lives by the minute uh, now in Gaza. Can you give us um, an idea of some of the challenges that uh, displaced children in particular are having to deal with? Yeah, well, displaced children are now sheltering in places that are not meant to be shelters. We're talking about schools, we're talking about hospitals, we're talking about uh, uh, tented camps. So uh, all of this is really um, uh, not not uh, fit for uh, human uh, or humane uh, shelter. Um, tens but hundreds share the same bathroom. Um, infrastructures like water, like sanitation systems, are damaged or are out of service uh, due to the to the huge numbers. So, children in uh, displaced children are really facing uh, uh, more risk uh, of getting uh, uh, ill with waterborne diseases. Um, um, now, with the winter coming on the on the uh, at the door, and I'm um, I'm in Amman, Jordan, which is not that far from Gaza, and the weather is really changing fast, uh, and rain has been pouring. Uh, for the past uh, two days, uh, so so things will will change even to the worst now for the Gazans, for the Gazans' children, um, and uh, their situation is really harsh. That's why uh, ceasefire is is crucial now, and allowing the um, uh, aid to enter without any uh, uh, limitation, continuous aid, uh, unimpeded uh, access for humanitarian aid is really really necessary alongside protection of that aid and protection of humanitarians themselves to be able to, to reach the children wherever they are.